Whilst I've done a few videos about French football and French footballers in the past, I must admit that I haven't done too many about Liga, primarily because this channel is about as popular in France as English and Russian football fans were in the summer of 2016. In the list of countries in which people watch the most HITC7's videos, France comes in 31st place, accounting for just 0.5% of all views, which is less than the likes of New Zealand, Nepal, and the United Arab Emirates. That's a shame, because I love the French, and hopefully today's video is both broad enough to attract views from outside of France, but can also go some way towards bringing a few of our close friends from across the channel on board. French football has experienced eras of domination, such as Saint Etienne in the 1960s and Lyon in the 2000s, but not the cross-generation dominance by just a few clubs, as we have seen in the rest of Europe's big leagues. Marseille and Saint Etienne are the joint most successful clubs in the French game, each having won 10 league titles, relatively modest tallies, in comparison to the 20 titles won by Manchester United, 18 won by Liverpool, 33 won by Real Madrid, 26 by Barcelona, 35 by Juventus, and 29 by Bayern Munich. This openness and lack of clear monopoly or duopoly over the years is quite rightly viewed as a good thing, but it is under significant threat right now. France's capital city had previously failed to really stamp down its authority in the National League, but that has changed over the last 10 years. Paris Saint-Germain had only ever won two league titles, the last of which came in 1994, prior to their takeover by Qatar Sports Investments. They've now won six of the last seven league titles, investing hundreds of millions of pounds and blowing the rest of the division out of the water. If you were to make up an all-star Ligue 1 11 right now, it would look pretty similar to the regular PSG starting lineup. Maybe the Parisians could have more of a challenge if the rest of the league were to unite though, and how such a team might shape up, is the task I've been handed with this video. Here is my Ligue 1 11 without PSG. Goalkeeper, Anthony Lopez. It's not a straightforward decision between the sticks, with talented young goalkeepers like Mike Mannion and Gauthier Lassonet, along with more experienced heads like Steve Mandanda, all worthy of consideration. On the balance of things, I think the most accomplished goalkeeper in France outside of PSG, though, is Anthony Lopez. The French-born Portuguese international is a one-club man at Lyon, and he exceeded 300 appearances at the Groupama Stadium earlier this season. Formidable in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, Lopez has marvellous reflexes, and he extended his stay at Lyon for another four years with a new contract back in August. Right back. Yusuf Atal. Algerian international Yusuf Atal is a talented right-back who you are unlikely to see playing in Ligue 1 anytime soon. The 23-year-old was ruled out of action for a long time last month, following a meniscal injury to his right knee. The fullback has already gone under the knife, but it was a crippling blow to a man who's been banging form since arriving at Nice in 2018. Such an attack-minded right-back, Atal is quick, good on the ball, and he constantly makes threatening runs down the right side of the pitch. He scored a hat-trick earlier this season, prompting many transfer rumours, but Patrick Vieira stated that he was not for sale under any circumstances. Atal's injury is a major setback, but he's still young and thoroughly deserves a place in this 11. Centre-back Jason Denier A really accomplished centre-back who always looks set to become a top player, Jason Denier is realising his potential now at Lille. Previously excellent on loan at both Celtic and Galatasaray, both clubs tried but failed to sign the Belgian on a permanent deal. Lyon did eventually agree a fee with Manchester City, and Denier has been playing in France for the last 18 months. Quick, alert, and fierce in the tackle, Denier still has room to improve, but he's already a fine centre-back, and he is averaging 1.2 blocks a game in Ligue 1 this season, which is the most of any player in the division. It's unclear whether Man City inserted a buyback clause into Denier's move to Lyon, but if he was still at the Etihad, I suspect he would be getting regular game time, especially in Americ Laporte's absence. Centre-back Laurent Koscielny One of France's outstanding centre-backs over the last 10 years, Laurent Koscielny won more than 50 caps for France between 2011 and 2018. The 34-year-old spent the bulk of his playing career for Arsenal, where he played more than 350 games, and captained the club for a number of years. Koscielny returned to France in the summer, somewhat acrimoniously, with a move to Bordeaux. He may be in the autumn of his career now, but at his best, Koscielny is still a fantastic competitor and a worthy inclusion in this 11. Left-back, Hassan Kamara. There's fierce competition for the left-back spot in this 11, but my choice is Rem star Hassan Kamara. Equally capable of playing at left-back or on the left wing, Kamara is a pacey wide man who isn't afraid to commit opposition players and look to take them on. A really diminutive footballer at just 5 foot and 5 inches tall, it's clearly taken time for managers to put their faith in Kamara as a fullback, but he looks right at home there now. 
His fine form in the early parts of this season hasn't gotten noticed, with Brighton and Hove Albion already having had a bid turned down, whilst their rivals Crystal Palace are also said to have made an approach for the player. Defensive midfield, Tim Wee Bakayoko. Born in Paris, Tim Wee Bakayoko represented France at just about every youth level and made a huge impression at Monaco following his move there from Rennes. Interest in him was high, and in the end, the midfielder joined Chelsea in a deal worth £40 million. Things didn't work out at Stamford Bridge, and I suspect many people will be surprised to hear that Bakayoko is still contracted to the Blues. Having spent last season on loan with AC Milan, he's now looking to return to his finest 2016-17 season vintage back at Monaco. Bakayoko was among the best players in Serie A last season, and he has largely maintained that form in France. Industrious, athletic and intelligent, Bakayoko isn't a magnificent technician, but he's still an excellent anchor or box-to-box -box player. He was an easy choice in this 11, and he could well find himself knocking on Didier Deschamps' door, requesting a place back in the France squad soon. Central midfield Hussem Awe A rarely gifted young French midfielder of Algerian descent, it ought not to come as any great shock to you that Hussem Awe cites Zinedine Zidane as one of his idols. Awer is only 21, but he's already made 119 appearances for Lyon, and he'd be a regular international if France didn't have the most remarkable depth of any national team on earth. An elegant and intelligent midfielder, Awer is inventive, accurate in the pass, and brilliant on the ball. He can play in either central or attack midfield with equal aptitude and panache, and he's been consistently impressive for two and a half years now. Central midfield, Thiago Mendes. Following a third place finish last season, Lyon are down in 7th in the league on table at the time of this recording, yet they have the most players of any team in this 11. I'm keeping together the current Lyon midfield partnership of Hussein Maouer and Thiago Mendes as a number of very talented midfield players miss out, although I shall come to some of those with our substitutes bench. Mendes had already firmly established himself as one of the best midfielders in Ligue 1 when he joined Lyon from Lille in the summer, reportedly for close to £20 million. A brilliant midfield engine, the uncapped Brazilian can play in defence midfield, but he's also smart on the ball and in the pass, and he should be given the freedom to push on in this 11 with Timwi Bakayoko behind him. Right wing, Florian Tovan. From a Newcastle United flop to a World Cup winner in the space of just a couple of years, no one can accuse Florian Tovan's career of being uneventful. In the 2017-18 season in particular, Tovan was one of the most devastating wide players in Europe. He scored 26 goals in 53 games that season, ending the campaign as a Europa League runner-up with Marseille and as a World Cup winner with France. Unfortunately, the fleet-footed wide man made just one appearance this season before it was decided that he would have to undergo keyhole surgery to correct an ankle injury he sustained towards the back end of last season. Tovan ought to be back in action before long and he'll return to a Marseille side who are the closest of any league on side to keeping pace with PSG. Left wing, Memphis Depay. We return to Lyon on the left flank, and although his performances can be a little bit hit and miss, it would be foolish to overlook Memphis Depay. He's scored 53 goals in 133 appearances from the left flank since signing for Lyon in 2016, and he is currently in the midst of the best campaign of his career. Following 10 goals and 10 assists in the league last season, the Dutchman has scored 14 goals in just 17 appearances in all competitions so far this season. He's an explosive footballer and a set-piece specialist, and if it weren't for his underwhelming stint at Manchester United, he'd probably have left Lyon in a big money move by now. Centre forward, Vissem Ben Yedder. It's a tough decision at centre forward, arguably the toughest in this entire 11, between Moussa Dembele and Vissem Ben Yedder. Both are very accomplished centre forwards, and no doubt Dembele is the more exciting prospect still aged only 23, but my choice is the current league on top scorer. This and Ben Yedder returned to France with Monaco in the summer following three seasons with Sevilla, and it has been a pretty momentous return. The 29-year-old has bagged 14 goals in just 17 league outings, putting him ahead of PSG trio Maracardi, Neymar, and Kylian Mbappe in the league and scoring charts. A diminutive and two-footed forward with fantastic striking instincts, Ben Yedder has also chipped in with four assists so far this term, and I think he has to take out a number nine shot. That's it for the 11 itself, but there are so many players I haven't and ultimately won't be able to mention. In terms of the substitutes bench, my 7 will be Marseille goalkeeper Steve Mandanda, veteran Lille centre-back Jose Fonte, Ivory Coast and Rems fullback Guillaume Conan, former Roma turned Marseille star Kevin Strootman, Monaco's World Cup winning midfielder Cesc Fabregas, Marseille superstar Dimitri Payet, who can play out wide or through the middle, and finally Lyon's prolific young frontman Moussa Dembele, who has been linked with moves to the likes of Chelsea, Tottenham and Newcastle. 
That's a pretty formidable side, and I haven't even mentioned the likes of Alexander Golovin, Gelson Martins, Teji Savanier, Islan Slimani, Kenny Lala, Habib Delo, and many more. Let me know in the comments whether you think this side could give PSG a run for their money. Personally, I think they'd run them close, but I suspect they'd still come out second best. Whilst there are some very good players in our 11, there isn't quite the star power of Mbappe, Di Maria and Neymar, but that's just my opinion. Thank you all for watching, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and obviously make sure you are subscribed to HITC7s, I'm planning on reaching a million subscribers by this time next week, so I'll be needing around 142,000 new subscribers every day until then, which I don't think is too much to ask for.